I'm Gwendolyn Sterka, Sterk Family Law, and I'm privileged to be here today with Margo McDermott, a representative from the 37th District, right where our office is located. Welcome, Margo. Thanks, Gwen. We're going to talk about the elephant in the room in the last <laughs> election, and that's called marijuana. I'm going to take the plunge. How'd you vote? I voted no, Gwen, and here's the reason. Even as late as the night before the vote, advocates pulled this district, the 37th District, okay. because they wanted me to vote yes. And they wanted me to provide information, you know, saying people in the district were overwhelmingly favoring this, so I should vote yes. And here's what their their very own polling results, which should have been the most positive polling results, were 27% yes, okay, 30% no, and the rest of everybody else was, I don't know. Wow. So I did not take that as a mandate to vote yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I That's didn't correct. vote yes, because what I was hearing from law enforcement and from our mayors here, you know, I didn't have a single mayor or police chief or other community leaders say, yes, Margo, vote for legalization. They were right. all saying, whatever you do, vote no. So that's, that's what you, you did, know, yeah. I represented the district. Right. And so you take that, that role and that responsibility very seriously. But you know what was interesting to me is, is to hear young people talking about, well, I'm going to vote a certain way because we're going to get marijuana. Well, that's not really our only issue here in the state of Illinois, but it was also interesting, just a philosophical shift almost. Uh, when I was walking door to door for the last election, which would have been in the fall of, um, let's see, 2018, right? you know, and I had a few people bring up the issue of marijuana and they were pro-legalization. And the arguments basically were, um, alcohol is legal, so marijuana should be, and um, my family members would not be alcoholics if they had marijuana to use, Oh, which I thought a, was an interesting Right, uh, it's argument. almost an existential leap in faith, you know? And I'm so, not sure that that's a valid, right. you know, scientifically exactly. or, right. you know, behaviorally. Right. But um, those were some of the issues. And so it was a small amount of people. Sure. You know, maybe reflective of the 27% who wanted me to vote sure. for legalization. Uh, but I did not see that as a big um, driver in this district. What do you think the philosophy is of the people who didn't know? I mean, is, that, is it just that they're not sure? Or is it modern times? How do you address that? I don't know. Okay. I, I, you know, you, you could guess what they're thinking, but I have really no idea. I think they probably are just thinking, who cares? Sure. And maybe we can tax it. I mean, I suppose you could get some money from that, but there are certainly other ways where the state could get revenue. One of the biggest arguments in favor of legalizing is that we need the revenue. And that seems to me to be um, just a horrible argument sure. for trying to do legalize something that has the ramifications that this does on our communities because it seems to me that in many ways it may cost more than we gain in tax dollars and that was another problem that I had with the whole regime of legalizing marijuana is that the state's going to collect these tax dollars but yet who is affected with the um, uh, outcome who are the first responders that are going to deal with what happens in the community, whether right. it's people having psychotic breaks, whether it's more accidents, whatever's going to, it's going to be our local um, municipalities and first responders. Sure. And they can apply for a <coughs> grant to get some money from the state to reimburse them, but we all know how that works right. and who gets that money, if any. So I just, I think that collecting money and leaving the fallout to the locals was is going to be disastrous. Sure. That's my fear. And what was, did you consider any scientific data within that structure as well? And what were you finding when you were reviewing? I found that to be very difficult to deal with. Okay. When you look at information that comes out of Colorado, Oregon, Washington, um, not California so much, because I just don't think we had that much data. It's not, re not you know, long enough ago. It seemed to be whoever was telling you was changing the data. So okay. either psychotic breaks increased, mm -hmm. the um, age of marijuana usage was driven down into junior high and even um, younger, Okay. Uh, traffic accidents and um, you know mayhem on the highway increased, and then uh, you know the advocates were saying, well, that's not really true. So I think it is true, Right. and the advocates were just trying to not um, uh, try to distract us from looking at that data, but I think it is 
pretty clear that accidents increase, emergency room visits increase, sure. and the age of drug usage is driven down. Driven and down. all those, I think, are bad things. With the bill passing, was there anything put in place to study what the impact of the modification was, or is it just simply, we're going to pass this, this is where it is, and there's no real follow-up? I'm not aware of any follow-up. Uh, one of the main things that this bill is trying to do, and the advocates have taken a lot of pride in the fact that they're trying to create some equity with respect to who is going to benefit financially from the sales of marijuana. And they want communities of color to be financial beneficiaries, the, the, the reason being that those communities were impacted the most by the criminalization of marijuana with the number of arrests and so on. So we're Illinois, it's an the, the advocates have taken a lot of pride in the fact that we have the most equity centered legalization bill of anyone. Now, as of the taping of this, has there been a single license granted to any person of color? No. No, right. That's the so thing you hear about. Time's going to tell, the time. and there are um, ways to follow up and see if that happens. Right. But whether there's going ER visits are going to be up or our insurance rates are going to go up, I don't believe we're tracking that. We're not tracking <laughs> it at all. And that's interesting, you know, because so part of the argument becomes these statistics. Yet nothing put in place to do that. And I think it's interesting to see, and it would be curious to see if the local communities start tracking those increases. Oh, there will be tracking. Just and not I think by that's the interesting, state. right? Yeah. And you use a comparison, you know, when the mental health facilities were not as readily available, then you see the increase. And in, for example the calls taken by their local fire departments and how they've had to respond to that and seeing if there's any kind of parity or comparison that can be done in like manner. And I just don't well, think we even, have that in place. Yeah. Even after the first week, there was an article in the Tribune that ER admissions are up. So Interesting. You know, but we could blame that on the flu, I guess. For no, some. these are people who I are like having a bad reaction to their, right. no, I get it, to but their you know, marijuana. What, I, what concerns me is, is that there's no testing mechanism. We're saying we're passing a new day, we're going to allow the legalization of marijuana, and yet, in order to track it, it's not being done simultaneously. I think that's a little troubling as well. Something One of the many that, aspects of this bill. Right. <laughs> that came through. Well, I appreciate that you listen to the local people, and I think that that goes back to one of the early podcasts we did, I don't know if you remember it, on the trustee role versus the delegate oh, yeah. role. <laughs> and, you know, taking that position that you took your role as a delegate, meaning that you're really a representative in our community, and came out and said there wasn't this clear support. So I think that that was backed up in your vote. Well... That's my job, and I try to do it every day I'm in Springfield. Right. And here. <laughs> Real important, and I think that that's a good message to people who are interested in politics, is that this is really truly a nature where you voted consistent with what you saw in your constituents. So, very fascinating. Well, we'll see what time tells, and maybe next year we can talk about the same subject. We will. <laughs> and see what happened as a result of this bill, because it's a frightening thing if the accidents go up and the local communities have to pay the price for it. I think well, so. Thank you very much. I think that it's going to be a scary statistic to see in the future. Stay tuned. Yep.